How does opera inspire author Carl Souls? Let's find out. But before we do, to keep up with the latest author interviews and behind the book stories, please click that subscribe button on the bottom of your screen. Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher and welcome to this week's episode of All About Books. And I am so excited to have author Carl Souls with me today. Carl is an educator and along with opera, she writes mysteries, erotica, gay lit, sci-fi with little or no science, and of late historical fiction. Caro's 14th novel, Dancing with Chairs in the Music House, was published by Anana Publications. And here's what Caro's novel is about. The novel is set in Toronto in 1949, and it's told through the eyes of a very precocious 10-year-old named Vanessa. And Vanessa knows a lot of secrets. In the rundown rooming house where the family and Vanessa live, she gets caught up in one particular secret that unleashes a chain of events with dire consequences. Welcome to All About Books. Well, thank you very much. And that is a lovely introduction to the book. <laughs> <laughs> so, Carl, I am at, you wrote an opera at the age of 10. I have to ask, what possessed a 10-year-old to write an opera? Well, I don't know. I, I mean, I hastily added it was a very short opera, like maybe five pages. But nevertheless, and it was called Sigismundo in the Tower. The <laughs> idea of the kind of thing it was. I don't know what I was thinking. I mean, I had seen a couple, and I guess I was obviously extremely impressed by this whole thing. And because I was home, like Vanessa, I was home all the time with, because I had very bad eyesight too. And they thought it was, you know, it was a very similar story, the background story. And so I thought I would, I would write little stories, which were, you know, two or three pages long as well. And I would write little poetry, all of which were rhymed. And uh, so I thought, well, I can do that. Well, of course I really couldn't, but you know, uh, so I just sort of sang the songs to myself and wrote down the, the, the stories. And I mean, it was all quite silly, but it, it, it was the kind of thing that, that I did back then because, you know, one is, I guess if you're creative, you start out by creating all sorts of different things. Naturally, I can't remember a thing about it except the title. <laughs> just as well, I don't think it's really worth considering much. <laughs> now, I like 10 year old Vanessa, when I was reading her story, you made me smile and laugh a lot as I was as I was reading. Good. Can you tell us a little bit about this 10 year old narrator, Vanessa? Well, this whole book is is really based a lot on my memories. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, the plot is completely fictional, but I mean, the, the, the place, I knew that place, I knew that house. My brother actually was the one who studied under this particular, the, 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 the person who forms the basis of Rona Lane, the teacher. Of course, she wasn't really like that, but anyway, she inspired her, shall we say. So there is a lot of that in there. And I based the character a lot on the kinds of things that I used to do in the kinds of games, because as I said, I too, was like Vanessa, I was uh, at home and with this having been, my parents having been told that I was going to go blind any minute, so I wasn't allowed to do anything much. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, how those two things go together, I don't really know. But anyway, very soon after uh, another more, more modern, shall we say, doctor came along and said, no, 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 that's not the thing you should be doing, quite the opposite, which was very lucky for me. But in the meantime, it forced me to do all sorts of interesting things and be much more introspective than most children were. And I think that's what I based Vanessa on yes. because she has, she doesn't play with other children. So she doesn't have any sort of outlets except for her, her friend, Janet. Mm -hmm. And I had a friend like that too, a similar sort of friend. I had, actually, I think I'd had two of them, but I thought one was good enough for the book. And uh, 
so so she is more or less forced into finding new outlets and new ways and this is how it, it, it's it's a kind of education i suppose and also of course it's her way of passing the time really it's just sort of the way she was and she's with adults a lot mm -hmm. which makes a child more precocious than you than ordinarily i think mm -hmm. <laughs> Especially being read to, i mean people you know being read to a lot as i was as well and it was um i really appreciate having been read to so much by you know from the classics and all that sort of thing as she was and it does wonderful things to one's knowledge of language and rhythms of language and all this sort of thing and why i think i know that i love language so much so not that i recommend this necessarily as a way to go <laughs> but anyway it's it, it worked in its way so carl you'd mentioned that you know there's a similarities a lot of similarities between you know 10 year old you and 10 year old vanessa are there any other characters in your book that are um based on real people most of them <laughs> most of my books aren't like this but this yes. this particular book is i sort of started with this idea and more and more of the real people whom I had run into somewhere along the way, came into it. Mind you, I didn't meet them all at once, but nevertheless, I put them all together. So yes, I would say that 80% of them ah. are actual real people. I did manage to change the names <laughs> to protect the innocent. But uh, yes, I think that's one of the things that gives it a special sort of feeling and meaning for me is because it, it is so familiar. And I mean, it's not necessary to writing, but it's another way of writing really, it is to sort mm -hmm. of, using your memories as sort of building blocks, as it were. Yeah. So do you think that these people will recognize themselves in your book? Oh, a lot of them are dead, so I don't have to worry about it. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it gets well enough known that people might actually read it and say, wait a minute. <laughs> I'd be quite happy, but I doubt it. I doubt it. <laughs> now, you do have a lot of really interesting characters in your books, you know, from Vanessa's immediate family to friends, other tenants in the rooming house. Um, once you got writing Caro, did any one of the other characters demand more time in the novel? <coughs> Excuse me. Well, I think it's of course, the, the, the character who moves the story is the one who demands the time. Mm -hmm. um, so he was one who perhaps demanded more time and he's sort of woven into the other sort of uh, in and around the others, other characters. Um, but other than that, no, uh, I, I don't think it really works that way with this particular book. Sometimes it does. Mm -hmm. <coughs> oh, goodness me. Anyway, not this time. Uh, what, one of the things I like to do, uh, Carl, on social media is pose a question like, if you could have an author come over for dinner, what would you ask? And one of the questions that came up from Craig, from Barry, he'd like to know, um, what is one piece of advice you would tell someone who, is, who wants to take writing more seriously? Really? the most important thing is just to sit down and write. And I mean, I used to teach writing I've, for, for, for quite a long time, creative writing, um, writing a novel, whatever it was. I've forgotten the name of it now for about, I don't know, quite a while. And of course, then you go through all of the things. And the one thing that, I mean, you can't really teach anybody to write. You can't, I mean, you either are a writer or you aren't as far as I'm concerned. And I would find that a lot of people in my in my classes would have real talent. But after sort of one evening with them, I could think to myself, all right, that's really good. That person's really good. They're not going to go anywhere because they don't have the push. You've got to do it all the time and you've got to be ready to push when you don't want to push. And I think the most important thing about writing is just to sit down and write. And yes, the thing about taking writing classes or courses or reading books and things, you might 
find some shortcuts. It might take you, I mean, it took me about nine years before I actually published anything. And I had read a book that said, I think it was John Gardner, who says it takes about 10 years. So I, I was so proud of myself. It only took me nine. Uh, but when I read that, I thought, no, 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 I can do that. I mean, why can't you? I, I'm, I've read so many novels. I know how to do this. I, I can write things. But no, it's more than that. The, writing a novel is very complex. But you have to sit down and do it. And um, there are lots of books about writing, which, and I find that every single one of them has at least one thing in it, which is useful. And I used to sort of tell my students, that, you know, this is good for this and that's good for that. And, and um, you know, this other one is really good for, for, for format and for structure. But really, if you don't sit down and write, you're not gonna get anywhere. That's all there is to it, just write. And, you know, if you don't do that, then you're not a writer. That's really a writer is somebody who writes. That's all there is to it. Might not be very helpful, but that's really what it is. <laughs> I think I think it is. There's no secret handshake here. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like a muscle. If you don't use it, you, you lose it. Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly it. Mm -hmm. Do you and do you write every day then, Carl? Pretty much. I yes. Um, I I do. And you know, sometimes it's simply going over earlier stuff in the book or the novel or whatever. And sometimes it's simply sitting down and thinking about what this character, why he's doing what he's doing, mm -hmm. because I might not even have thought of that yet. Uh, yeah. I, I'm doing something because he has to do it for the plot. <laughs> but wait a minute, <laughs> why is he doing it? You know, uh, you have to sort of figure that out and, and show it. So, I mean, it's not always just, you know, typing, 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 typing. It's often, you know, walking the dog and thinking through the what, what you're going to do next and how the scene is going to work and where you're going to set it and whose point of view it is. I mean, all these things have to be figured out before you even start. So it's it's not, you don't have to think that, you, these people who say, okay, I, I have to write 3000 words a day or whatever it is. I, I don't think that that works. That might work for some people, but not for me. So, so just do something on the book every day or the story. Yeah. And on that note, like, what are you working on right now? Like, what's keeping you busy? Right now, it is another novel which is based on memories of mine and the places mm -hmm. I've been. This one is, it takes place in 1985. In, and uh, a woman and her gay friend, she, she invites him down to this small village in the Maritimes where she used to go when she was young. And she's having a little rough time and she's trying to write a romance because her husband thinks this is the thing to do to make money when you're writing. I mean, we all us writers have tried to write a romance. And it's a lot harder than <laughs> but doesn't all usually work. But anyway, some of us can manage and most of us can't. So anyway, this is her job. She says, okay, damn, I'm gonna go down there where no one's gonna bother me. And then she invites her friend Freddie because he's had he had a bad breakup with his lover. So he's all upset about that. So she said, Well, come on down here and you can take photographs because he's an amateur photo photographer. Great place for that. So they go down there, and of course, things do not work out at all well because things aren't the way she thought they were down there. And maybe she didn't even realize what it was. And it's called when the tide goes out, because when the tide goes out. It reveals things underneath there, which, you know, you didn't quite, you, they've been there all the time, but you didn't get to look at them. And this is what they do when they go down there, they look at all the rotten things <laughs> in their lives and, and their relationships and such. So that's what I'm working on now. Oh, I, I am intrigued. <laughs> no, it, it's, quite, it's completely different from this one. Um, I guess it, it's not really historical because it's 85. I think it has to be 50 years or something before it's historical. I'm not sure. But anyway. It's, it takes place in 85. Well, we'll look forward to that one coming to life then, Caro. Oh, thank you. And a great big thank you for coming on All About Books today. I really appreciate you giving us some more information about Vanessa and your book. For our watchers out there, I will put links down below in the description book so you can learn more about Caro or, or purchase a copy of her book. So thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, and thank you.